Jaguar E-Pace 2022 Long-Term Review It's the perennial modern age question, should I buy an electrified car or stick with what I know? We've been running the plug-in hybrid E-Pace for a couple of months now, but while it's back at Jaguar with some as yet undiagnosed electrical problems, we borrowed an E-Pace D200, the mild hybrid diesel offering in the compact SUV range. In fact, for the moment, it's the only other E-Pace currently available to order alongside the PHEV, because of the semiconductor shortage. We're in the D200 R Dynamic say, one trim above our R Dynamic S PHEV, but to compare like for like, an S trim the diesel costs £42,840 and the plug-in hybrid is £48,795, a sizable £2,800 price rise since our test car's arrival. In personal lease terms, based on a quick look on the web, the diesel is around £610 a month for three years at 12,500 miles a year whereas the PHEV is £670. Other figures on paper? The FEVs claim CO2 emissions are 44g slash km and combined consumption is 141 miles per gallon, while the diesel is 173g slash km and 43.9 miles per gallon. If it's a company car, the difference in benefit in kind tax is huge 8% for the PHEV and 37% for the diesel. In reality, our time so far with the PHEV means the average fuel economy is pretty much in line with the diesel, at around 41 miles per gallon. Admittedly, that's not optimum, I use the full electric mode sporadically but not as much as I could, so it could be higher but it's hard to imagine it ever being at 141 miles per gallon, although that's true of all plug-in hybrid figures. Visually, there's little difference between the two cars other than the vibrant red of the diesel versus the sedate silver of the PHEV. The wheels of the diesel are slightly less curbable, there's a more business-friendly black leather interior rather than the slightly more flash cream and burgundy of the PHEV, and there are a few different options, most notably the 990 pounds panoramic sunroof. Getting into the diesel after time in the PHEV, the most prominent difference is the lack of immediate smooth power facilitated by the electric motor and instant torque of the PHEV. For driving around town, it takes a bit of readjusting to the combustion engine delivery of power and it feels more jarring. You notice the gearbox shifting around from its naturally high eco gear selection to a couple of ratios down to give you the torque you want. In the PHEV, it's mostly smooth sailing on EV power alone around town so responses are almost instant. The D200 is naturally noisier, too, although for a diesel, the engine is well insulated and refined. As has always been the case with diesels, it's comforting to see on the dashboard the high number of miles left in the fuel tank and only a dent on the fuel gauge after a decent journey. In terms of mileage per tank full, it has almost doubled that of the PHEV at just under 600 miles. That feeds into diesels as the long-standing powertrain of choice for mile munching, and this D200 is very much at home on the motorway, although it's happy around town, too. Acceleration is slower than in the PHEV, 0 to 62 miles per hour takes 8.4 seconds to the FEV Swift, 6.5 seconds, but it's still good for getting up to speed. The FEV's driving dynamics are better, not surprisingly when it's billed as the sporty E-Pace, but the diesel is no damp squib in this arena, either. So which would I go for? For my lifestyle, living in town but adding plenty of long-distance miles at the weekends, the PHEV feels the more natural fit. The P300 is a refined, comfortable, enjoyable car, all words that could also describe the diesel, but with diesel prices constantly on the up and high taxation, the PHEV feels like a more sensible long-term solution. When the MK2 Range Rover Evoque arrived in 2019, it introduced a bit of kit so nifty that we gave it that year's innovation gone at our annual awards ceremony. Both elements of it, clear sight ground view and clear sight rear view mirror, are now available across much of the Jaguar Land Rover stable. Indeed, they are fitted to our Jaguar E-Pace as part of the technology pack, 1,220 pounds, which also brings wireless phone charging, a head-up display and an interactive driver's display. Clearsight ground view is the realization of the transparent bonnet idea first seen on the Land Rover Discovery Vision concept in 2014, while clearsight rearview mirror uses a camera to show what's behind you, rather than a mere reflection. 
What seems so smart about the technology is how it suits the two core audiences that JLR is playing to, the outdoorsy rural community and the SUV-driving urbanites, because this tech was primarily created for easier off-roading but is equally useful in town centers and tight parking spaces. Like the majority of e-pace owners, it's fair to say, I am doing a lot more driving around town than greenlanding, but the theory stands, I'm using both ClearSight features plenty and finding them useful. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.